Now for one of the most important parts of creating your slab container is assembling it. So you need all your tools and all your slabs at this point and you're just going to grab one and this is really important how you cut it. So you're going to use a needle point tool and cut at like a 45 degree angle. So when I say that you're doing the inside of the slab so not the outside the inside okay look how consistent and beautiful that is and you're gonna do it on every single edge you need to cut slowly because if you don't you're going to not be a perfect 45 degree all the way you may have it a little bit more so and the more consistent you can do it the better Remember, it's on the inside of the slab, so never on the outside. So this slab here, I'm flipping it over, doing the inside. And you do you repeat this for every single slab. I know this is going to take a little bit of time, but the more consistent you do it, the better. Another little uh, cheat on how to get a more consistent 45 degree angle other than holding your needle point tool at a 45 degree angle is how you um, hold your hand. So let me show you how to do this. What you do is you get your needle point tool and as you begin, what you are going to do is keep your hand touching the slab. So what I mean by that is as you drag it across, you're making sure your hand is touching it the whole time like this and all the way down. You never want to have a needle point tool just like in the air cutting. Your palm is touching the slab as you run it across. It'll just give you more uh, stability, so it'll help you out with your 45 degree angle. So I'm almost done here cutting all of my slabs. I'm even going to cut my little two um, slab pieces for my top, all sides. This way of cutting slabs is just a stronger way of attaching them and actually more of an architectural way of construction. Okay, so we got our last one here. So now that we prepped all of our pieces, now we're going to add slip. And before we add slip, of course we score. So I use a fork, it's a lot faster than a needle point tool, but you can use your needle point tool. And you're gonna score really well on all of your sides. This shouldn't be new to you, you've done this before on a previous project, but just remember to do this well. This is what's gonna make or break your slab container. If you don't do this part correctly, your slab container is just gonna fall apart when it dries. So you're gonna score both of your pieces Remember both sides, you never just score one side. Score it really well, X mo movements, shapes. Then you're ready for your slab. Remember to dab, do not smooth the slip over where you just scored because then you're just gonna smooth it out and ruin <laughs> everything you just scored. Dab both sides that you're connecting and do that wiggle and press until you feel the, the slabs kind of cling together. Remember, slip is like the glue and clay, so you want a decent amount of it. And when I say decent amount, when you add the slip over the scored parts, you want to make sure that there's enough slip on there that it's filling all the cracks and scratches that you just made. So we're going to do this for our entire slab when we put it together. You already know what the back, the front, the side, the top is because we've done that with our paper stencil. Now we're going to put it together. Now, once we get these three together, you'll notice it's still kind of flimsy. Just like before, we get a coil, which I just kept the pieces that I cut off and use them as coil. You're gonna press them in there to seal your uh, cracks or your places you just scored and slipped. Now you can use your finger to smooth them out, but I find with the slab container, it's easier to use your wood modeling tool. Now when you do that, you need to make sure to support the outside. So that's what I just showed you with my hand. And you're going to pinch it together and you're going to use this tool to smooth out the clay coil we just put in there. We're gonna smooth it up on one side and then down on the other. So that coil is gonna seal over that crack and then just clean it up a little bit. 
So you're going to do this on every side. Notice how I'm still supporting the outside corner. If you don't support the outside of your container as you're smoothing it, it's just going to fall apart. So you can do this on every single crack, every single connection. So you're probably understanding by now you're going to score, slip, attach, coil, smooth. This is going to be a repeated process. So by the end of this container, you should be really comfortable with it. I'm doing that pinching on the outside to make sure the outside's nice and smoothing the crack on the outside also. Guess what? Now we're going to do it on the other one. So here we go. We're going to score every side. And dab slip. Never smooth, just dab. Then you're doing where you're connecting it. And then you wiggle and press until it hooks and pinch the corners. Get a coil. Support the outside and press it in there. And smooth it out using your wood modeling tool. Make sure you press it and smooth it out on both sides. And then clean it up. So our very last wall, here we go, score, dab slip every side till every crack and scratch is filled. And then where you're attaching it, both sides. Remember when you are pressing it together, you're doing a slight wiggle and pressing it till it really fuses together. Pinch those corners just to give it extra stability. Don't forget the bottom. It's important. Sometimes people forget about the bottom, so I'm actually flipping it upside down and smoothing it out because I forgot about it for a second. Voila. My hands are getting a little slippy, so I clean them off. Also clean off my space a little bit, and now we need to put coils on the inside. Now watch how I put the coil. It's really, really hard to get my fingers all the way down there, so we're going to use the other side of the wood modeling tool and, and use it so we can um, get coils all the way down to the bottom. So I can use my fingers decently down into the container, but I know not everyone has skinny, bony fingers like I do. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to take your wood modeling tool, you're going to take a coil, and you're going to kind of put it on your wood modeling tool to get it down there. So see that? And it's going to stick and then press it in there. This is so then you don't have to press it down with your fingers. And you can do this for your sides like that till it gets down to the bottom of your container and then you can smooth it out. To get the very bottom of your container, we're going to actually use the other side of the wood modeling tool. So flip it over. Get some coil. There we go. And just really it's just going to attach because clay is wet. So go down there, boop, and press it down and smooth it out. It's a little bit more awkward than using your hands, but you still need to seal it even though it's a full container. Pinch the corners. Make sure they're really attached and not coming apart. Now we're going to do our top, our last two pieces. And score and slip them just like we did the other ones. You're going to be pros at this process by the end of this container. 
But the key is to take your time during all this. If you try to rush it, the most common thing that happens to slab containers is when it dries, the slabs come apart from one another. And so you get these huge cracks on the sides when after it gets fired because they're just coming apart. So that's why it's so important to use a good amount of slip and to take your time to make sure it's really well attached so this doesn't happen. Once we have all of our slab pieces, we're really just going to clean up the top a little bit because we had scoring there and we're good.